What's going on, y'all? So this is the second frame in the Unkillable series. We are using Rhino Prime. You can use Rhino Regular if you want. And by the way, if you guys did not know what I was referencing, I mean, come on, y'all. At the beginning of this video, if y'all are one of those people who thinks Harry Potter with his little Experiamus uh, stick, his little magic stick and his broom flying around with his dorky nerd glasses, if you think he is superior to Lord of the Rings, then you are out of control. That just shows how our society is going downhill, and I don't think there's any return from that, guys. Once once you make that choice, I, you know, your life is going to be in a bad place. But, anyways, Rhino is really good for new players, especially for new players. And if you're an experienced player, he's not bad either. He has a good damage boost. Um, he kind of has everything. You push one button, it gives you more damage. You push a different button, it makes you take no damage. So it's really good for survivability, depending on how late in the game you're going. Once you get into pretty late game, it gets kind of serial. So what I did there, guys, is I just charged. I used my one, charged through the enemies, then used my two, activated my skin. And as you can see, I just got 120... 1,000 or something um, armor, that's my armor rating, and that is pretty nice, okay? I think we can all agree that's a sufficient amount of armor for the level enemies which I'm fighting right now. Now the way this works is, is whenever you roar, you have a little bit of a combo counter, and basically what that's going to do, it's going to give you a little bit of an invulnerability period where you're going to be absorbing damage, and however much damage you absorb is going to be added into this huge equation which I'm not going to put up on here, but I am going to show you how you can skate around like a ninja turtle on a trash can lid using your sword and shield, which looks pretty awesome. But what it's going to do is you multiply a certain amount of health, your armor, and a few other stats, and you have an invulnerable period where it's going to add all that together, however much damage you took during that time, and give you your overall rating. So Iron Shrapnel is a must for this, guys, okay? Iron Shrapnel is going to allow you to deactivate Iron Skin, and you need to be able to do that, because once you get to like 2 or 3% left, that's a no-go, man. You got 2 or 3 skin, or even a couple hundred, or even like a thousand. It doesn't matter. You're going to get one shot, depending on how late you are in the game, so that's absolutely necessary. Next is Ironclad Charge. Every enemy that you hit while using your wand, where you charge through everyone like a total douche, what's going to happen is you're going to get like 50% increase in your armor rating for every person you hit. That's pretty good. So you get a big group of enemies. If you're playing with a Nidus or you're playing with like a Vauban or something, oh my god, it just gets ridiculous, man. If you can just lasso all those dudes together, get them all hugged up, you can just get a ridiculous amount of armor. But obviously, I'm not doing that. I'm just playing solo, and I'm doing this just with hardly any enemies just to show you how viable it really is. Now, this is the build I am using right now. Um, well, actually, I don't have Cunning Drift on there when I was doing it. I had Enemy Sense because when you do survival, you just need Enemy Sense to bring those enemies in so that you can get your life support because the enemies will not start running at you in survival until they appear on your map, and then they start sprinting instead of, like, walking. Because for some reason, they just don't care about the war, unless you can see them, I guess. I don't know exactly. But this build here is something I'm going to show you all in a minute, just what max range looks like in case you want a CC build. So we will get into that, and we will come back to this build. I'll put it up on the screen again in a second. So this is my 308 power strength that I'm about to show you all, okay? 308 power strength build, and we're just going to zoom over here to these guys real quick. I got There's like a playboy in the middle of there or something, dude. You know what they're doing. A bunch of nasties. Like, put it away, man. Put it away. So, charge through. Use my iron skin. As you can see, that's like 125,000 armor, okay? Now, that's really good considering I had no... I didn't take any damage to add to my total um, armor rating, so that's nice. It's pretty good. So more power strength definitely is helpful, but you are going to sacrifice efficiency and some other things. Now, this is with max range. Look how far you can hit those guys. That's that build I was showing you a second ago. I just wanted to throw it on here for one second just so you guys can see that you do get some significant um, range. And plus, it kind of looks cool. Like, it's just raining dudes, you know? So if you're into that, you know, then you, you, you would definitely be into this. Basically... If you're on a defense mission where you have the dude who's like uh, running around, you know, and he, he can never stays where you want it, you know, those defense where you have to protect the individual instead of the instead of like the cryo box or whatever. This uh, this, this is pretty effective for that. But 
this is what I was using. I would recommend throwing some augments on here, obviously Vitality or Still Fiber or whatever you're trying to do, it's up to you. This is very unique. I just wanted to show what max range looked like. I'm not actually showing a build for that. This is the one that we will be using almost exclusively. Almost the entire time this is the build I was using it has enough range for you to be able to hit everybody you need to. It has enough duration. It has enough effort for you to be able to absorb a good amount of damage, and it has enough power strength, especially with growing power, that gives you 20% extra. So it's really nice. Plus Arcane Guardian, guys. If you can get that to proc before you activate your Iron Skin. So Arcane Guardian procs, you zoom through the enemies, then activate Iron Skin. You're going to get a gigantic bonus from all of that. Um, so it's just extremely effective. It's just really, really good. Now this is just with that 100% range, okay? That's all. Just the base level range, you're still getting these guys just fine. They're not doing anything. They're not going anywhere. They're just, and you have enough time to get out of there. So if you need to escape the room, say your skin's running out, or whatever, and for some reason you can't charge in there, which I would recommend the charge though, because you're immune, you're invulnerable, you're invincible when you're using your charge. And then, you know, activate your two, your iron skin, and absorb all that damage from them. It's gonna add all that from the amount of dudes you hit, from the iron skin you gain, and you're going to get the boost, man. You're gonna get a huge boost. Now, there are a few drawbacks to this. Like I said earlier, the problem is, y'all, Whenever you're playing Warframe, the enemies scale really fast later on. Once you hit two hours, it gets crazy. Most people won't go that long, but even after an hour, they just start ramping up pretty fast, and it doesn't matter. You're going to get one shot through, um, through your skin. Now, that's why it's kind of good that his does scale to an extent, because you do absorb the damage that they're dealing. So however much damage they're dealing to you per shot, you're going to absorb all of that with your iron skin, which is really, really nice. Now, what I did there, that is what I'm talking about when you can activate your um, iron shrapnel. You can deactivate it and it shoots dudes across the map. Now, the last part of this video, guys, is looking at the Silva and Aegis. And the reason we're looking at it is because it has a huge damage reduction with Avenging Truth. Now, you don't have to use that. If you're not using it, I would recommend you put on Berserker. But while you're blocking with this, you're gonna do huge damage. So this is only a gas build, and if you don't have a ribbon, throw on your dual status toxin mod. That's what I would be using. That's all this ribbon's really giving me. It's giving me some range, a little bit extra crit chance, which doesn't matter because of blood rush, and the same, I'm almost the same amount of toxin as you'd be getting. So I'm not getting like any crazy extra damage. Look what I did there. Are y'all seeing this? Killed everybody with that cool Ninja Turtle, turtle uh, Cowabunga slide, which is completely amazing. And the rest of the guys, they just don't have a chance, man. I didn't even hit the one dude, but I did jump off the edge, making myself look like a total noob, absolutely foolish. And look how cool this, look how cool my frame looks, y'all. Look at this, mm, just looking nasty. Now what does it look like against armor? Well, check it out, we'll slow-mo it for you. 155 armored Grenier, gonna spin out, and let's see, they're all dead. All of them except for Todd, and Todd is that awkward weird guy who hangs around at your house after the party's over and you can't get him to leave, and he's like creeping around like he's sticking cameras in your dolls. It's just weird, man. I don't have dolls, I don't know why I said dolls, but either way, he's still a Todd. Now, the way you do this move, guys, with the shield um, throw and slide, is you just hold down the melee button. And then while your shield is being thrown, you hold down the melee button again, or just tap the melee button again, and you will do the slide. Now, if you tap it again while sliding, you will do that spin at the end move, which looks pretty awesome. And so that, that helicopter move is awesome when you're going down long corridors, but just look how powerful the shield throw by itself is. Just hit him once, just once, just one throw of the shield, and it killed the 155 armored grenier. So guys, that is my take on this build. I recommend it highly. It works very good. It's very effective, especially if you're new. Anybody can get into this one. It's really easy. Let me know what y'all think. If you have a specific build you want me to get into, I would love to uh, you know, check it out. If you want me to do a Neja slide build, see how far Neja can slide on a flat surface, that sounds fun to me, right? Anyways, y'all, that is going to be all for me. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. I will be back next time. Peace.